Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to learn about the floating point numbers. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, we are going to acquire the understanding of binary floating point numbers first. Thereafter, we will observe the conversion of fractions from binary to decimal and vice versa. Now, if you remember, during the session representation of binary numbers, we learned that if we consider computation, numbers can be classified broadly into two different categories, the fixed point and the floating point numbers. And in that particular session, we learned only about the fixed point integers. So, in this session, we are going to focus on the fractions and the floating point numbers. Now, let's move a few notches back in our memory. If you remember, when we were introduced to the number system chapter itself, we came to know about the decimal number system, where we observed that in decimal, the symbols are 0 to 9, that is 10 symbols, which was the reason for the base being 10. And since the base is 10, the place values are named like units place, tens place, hundreds place, thousands place, and so on. Basically, the units place has the place value 10 raised to the power 0, then the tens place has the place value 10 raised to the power 1, hundreds place has 10 squared, thousand place has 10 cubed, and so on. But honestly, this is only the half of it. Basically, from the most significant digit of a decimal number, if we start moving towards the place value 10 raised to the power 0 or the units place, after this, we are supposed to acquire the decimal point, right? And the place values afterwards, decimal points are something like this. 10 raised to the power minus 1, 10 raised to the power minus 2, 10 raised to the power minus 3, and so on. So basically, when from 10 raised to the power 0, shifting towards the left means multiplying with 10 every time. Similarly, from 10 raised to the power 0, shifting towards the right is actually division by 10. So now from the place value 10 raised to the power minus 1, if we want to shift towards the right, that is, if we want to shift to the place value 10 raised to the power minus 2, we will again divide this place value with 10. And the same can be stated if from this place value we want to shift towards the right, that is 10 raised to the power minus 3. Now notice carefully, of this particular number line, this 10 raised to the power 0 and this decimal point are the center of it. The more we shift towards the left, we keep on multiplying with 10, and the more we shift towards the right, we keep on dividing by 10. Now, since we are talking about the decimal number system, that is why this point is actually called decimal point. However, this is more commonly known as the radix point. Because to be really honest, apart from the decimal number system, for all the different number system, we can't really call it decimal point, right? That won't make any sense. Rather, for those number systems, we will call it radix point. So, similar to the decimal number system's place values, in case of the binary number system, the place values will be something like this. Observe, here, we are having the place values 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed, and the place values afterwards, the radix point, are 2 raised to the power minus 1, 2 raised to the power minus 2, 2 raised to the power minus 3, and so on. So, for binary, the center will be this place value 2 raised to the power 0 and the radix point. Since we have acquired the understanding of the place values of the floating point numbers, let's now observe how we can convert a floating point binary number to its equivalent decimal. Let's try to find out the decimal equivalent of the binary number 101, radix point 101. Now, consider the radix point. There are three digits to the left of it and three more digits to the right of it. So, the place values will be something like this. Basically, the place value of the most significant bit is going to be 2 squared and the place value of the least significant bit is going to be 2 raised to the power minus 3. Now, let's place the left ones first. Now, the right ones will be placed as this. Now, how we are going to obtain the decimal equivalent? We will follow the same way which we learned in the session conversion to decimal. Basically, we are going to consider the place values which has 1s placed underneath. So, starting from the MSB, the place value which 1 is placed underneath is 2 squared, which will give us the value 4. Now, here it is 0, so we are going to ignore it. Now, here 1 is placed underneath 2 raised to the power 0, from which we will obtain the value 1. 
So this is all we can obtain from the places before the radix point. Now after the radix point, consider this place. Here the place value is 2 raised to the power minus 1 which will give us the value 1 by 2 or half. Now since this is 0, we are going to ignore this. However, here the 1 is placed underneath 2 raised to the power minus 3 which will give us the value 1 by 8. Now 4 plus 1 is 5 and 5 plus 0 0.5 is 5.5. Now 1 by 8 is actually 0 0.125. So 5.5 5 plus 0 0.125 will give us the value 5.625 in decimal. Therefore, the decimal equivalent of the binary value 101 radix point 101 will be 5.625. Now for the sake of practice, Let's try to find out the decimal equivalent of the binary value 1101 radix point 01. Observe the radix point. We have 4 bits before that and 2 bits afterwards. So our place values will be something like this. Basically we will start off with 2 cubed and the place value of the least significant bit will be 2 raised to the power minus 2. Now let's place the bits. Now coming to the MSB, the 1 is placed underneath 2 cubed, so it will give us the value 8. Thereafter, 1 is placed underneath 2 squared, so we will get the value 4. Then 1 is placed underneath 2 raised to the power 0, which will give us the value 1. Now after the radix point, the 1 is placed underneath the place value 2 raised to the power minus 2, which will give us the value 1 by 4. So 8 plus 4 plus 1 is 13, and 1 by 4 is 0 0.25. So we will eventually get the value 13.25. So this is how we can convert any floating point binary value to their equivalent decimal values. Let's now observe the conversion from decimal to binary. Now we will learn about the process with the help of an example. So let's try to find out the binary equivalent of the decimal number 0 0.625. Now for these type of conversions, the idea is to add the fraction to itself and then retain the integer until the entire sequence becomes zero. Let me illustrate. So basically we will take this fraction 0 0.625 and add it to itself. So 5 plus 5 will give us 10. So 0 as sum and 1 as carry. So 1 plus 2 is 3 and 3 plus 2 is 5. So we will get the sum as 5. Now 6 plus 6 is 12, so we will get 2 in here and 1 will be placed after the decimal point. Now once we have added the fraction to itself, thereafter we are supposed to retain the integer, right? Now observe, here the integer that we have obtained is 1, so we are going to retain it. Now the remaining portion, that is the fraction 0 0.25, will be added to itself once again. So 5 plus 5 is 10, so we will again have 0 as sum and 1 as carry. So 1 plus 2 is 3 and 3 plus 2 is again 5. So we will get the fraction as 0 0.50. Now this time we are going to retain the integer 0. So we are retaining that. Now the remaining portion that is this fraction 0 0.50 or 0 0.5 will be added to itself which will eventually give us the value 1.0. Now observe the integer that we are going to retain this time. It is 1. So we are retaining that. Now consider the fractional portion. This is 0.0. .0. And this is exactly where we are going to stop our procedure. Because we were supposed to keep on adding the fractions to themselves and retain the respective integers until the entire sequence becomes zero. Now this time it has become zero, right? Now the integers that we have obtained, these will be retained from the left to right. But before that we will place the zero and the radix point. So the binary equivalent of the decimal fraction 0 0.625 is 0 0.101. Now there is another way which is a bit quicker than this one. So basically we will take this fraction 0 0.625 and then we will multiply it with 2. In simpler terms we are again performing the same thing. So we will end up acquiring the value 1.250. Now from this we are going to retain the integer that is 1. Now coming to the fractional portion, we will take it and multiply it again with 2. Now this time we are going to get the value 0 0.50 and observe the integer that we have acquired, it is 0. Now performing the same drill with the fraction that is 0 0.5, this time we will end up acquiring 1.0. Let's retain the integer, it is 1. Now for the sake of uniform computation, we will perform the multiplication another time. And this time we will end up having the value as 0.0. .0 so this will be our stopping condition.
Now here the obtained integers will be noted down from top to bottom. If you remember during division by 2, we were retaining the remainders in a bottom up manner. On the contrary, when we are multiplying the fractions with 2, we are going to retain the integers in top down fashion. So to summarize, we can convert any fraction to its equivalent binary and for that all we have to do is keep on multiplying the fractional parts with 2 and at the same time keep on retaining the integers until the entire sequence becomes zeros. But the problem with this particular type of conversion is that obtaining the sequence of all zeros can be a bit difficult at times. Let me illustrate. Let's try to find out the binary equivalent of the decimal fraction 0 0.623. So what we will do, we will take this fraction and multiply it with 2 which will eventually give us the value 1.246. Let's retain the integer, it is 1. Now for the fraction that is 0 0.246, we are going to multiply it with 2 again and this multiplication will give us the value 0 0.492. Observe, this time the integer is 0. Now multiplying 0 0.492 with 2, we obtain the value 0 0.984. So this time the obtained integer will be 0. Then again let's perform the multiplication another time 0 0.984 multiplied by 2. This time it will give us the value 1.936 and we will retain the integer as 1. Now observe carefully, we don't really know how long this multiplication will keep on going until we find out the sequence of all zeros. So for situations as this, we generally use close approximation using the fixed length memory space provided by our computers. And how this is done, we will get to know about that in our upcoming sessions. So in this session, we first acquired the understanding of the binary floating point numbers and thereafter we observed the conversion of fractions from binary to decimal and vice versa. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe the different representations of floating point numbers. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.